Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ormi, and we are back with some FM16. I know the beta for FM17 has been released. Sadly, I have not got the game yet. I missed the pre-order, and don't quite have enough money to purchase at full price, so... We're going to finish out this season at least with Catania on FM16 and then see where we are in terms of being able to buy the new game. Um, but yeah, as soon as I get FM17, expect content to go up about that game on the debut. We will see if I can win this, you know, the Premier League with Swansea City for four years in a row. We're also going to see if I can win... If I get the game early enough, if I can win the Premier League with Swansea City on the beta for the third time in four years as well. So, very difficult to achieve considering sort of our squad this season. I don't feel Swansea is as strong as it has been the past two or three years. And, um, yeah, a little bit of a tough time in real life. I think that's going to be shown in the game as well. We've got a better attack, but a worse defence. And... I need to sort of make sure that, you know, I can sort that out early before going for any titles with Swansea. So, my first season challenge with Swansea will be sort of the first thing going up on the channel with FM17. Even if it's just a retrospective, excuse me, retrospective look back on the season to see how we did and how close we got, if indeed we did manage to get it or not. So, that's to come. If and when FM16 arrives in my Steam library by some magicry or by my purchase. Until then, we're on to Catania once again. It is the home game here. We're against Roma. It's first versus third. And yeah, good season so far. You can see on the left hand side there. Fiorentina, Udinese is struggling down the bottom. Inter Milan not having good season. AC Milan in the bottom half. And then you move up the table, seeing Bologna in fifth, Torino in fourth. They're having good seasons. Roma in third. We expect to see them playing well, and they are. In second is Juventus. And they are seven points ahead of Roma. Big gap, that. It's a further seven ahead that we are over Roma at this stage as we are top of the table by some distance 14 wins three draws zero losses to start this season top goal scorer is Luis Enrique he's got 12 for the season lagging a little bit over the last two seasons but still a great performance there Oscar de Britz is the highest average rating the young German midfielder coming in big for us at the moment Kingsley Akoy at right back taking over from a prelate with the assists. Ray Minaj has got good passing when he's played. Enrique has been the most important, most valuable player. And yellow cards are kind of scattered about a bit. So that's something there. Now, we are in January. I think it's only right that we take a look a little bit here at the transfer history and just see a little bit over what's happened. We're going to go outs first. Um... Andrea Pauli, 10 million out to Pescara. Not a great player at this stage for us, but he, he did have his, you know, his role to play. 30 years of age, didn't feel like he was going to be doing too much for us, so doubled the money and had two great seasons for him. This year, he was very much marginalised. The time was right to sell him. Everything was right to sell him. So, Pescara there for 10 million. We also dumped out Aljaj Kucek, the 20-year-old Slovenian target man, for 300000 A bit of a bargain there. I think they overpaid on Pauli, so I wasn't too fussed about giving them a little discount on Kucek because he wasn't going to make it for us. We just needed to get rid. And I think we would have got maybe $2 million for him at most at this stage. So, good little player, but we got far better in our team and coming through as it is. So 300 grand for Kuczek to go out, I think, was the right move to make. Then we had a big, big bid for Jorginho. I know it says 16 and a half, but that could go up to 28 and a half million. He's currently rated at 27. Jorginho goes out to Man United. Kind of made way for 
you know, amongst other the Brits and Roberto in central midfield. So we say goodbye to Robinho. That's for Robinho. Jorginho, still a pretty good player. Still someone who could do a very good job and be in and around the first team. But he kind of lost his first team spot almost this year. So we made a big profit already. Doubled our money almost on him. By the time this is done, we're going to have tripled, nearly quadrupled our money if those clauses pay off. So, Jorginho heads off to Man United and gives us a little bit more cash to work with. So, pretty good there, I feel. That is pretty good. The only thing that has happened is we did agree a deal for Gus de Boer to join us at the end of the season. Very good young Dutch striker, I believe. Um, could be going on to big things. Now, in order to get him in early, I decided to pay two and a half million. I think that's a no-brainer. He's already like Kushek, I believe, in terms of ratings, maybe a little bit ahead, but he's got so much more potential. And I'm really hoping that Gus de Boer will turn out to be an absolute beast of a player. So, he does play as an advanced forward, that does suit us. He can head and finish. You know, he's a bit more of an all-rounder. He can go down the wing and cross the ball in as well. Not a tall man, so not going to be amazing there, but a wonder kid who was going to come in on a free, and we have snapped up now for two and a half million. As well, in this sort of transfer window, we know we've got Corridge coming in end of the season. We're also looking to bring in Antonio Marcos on a free transfer. We've got competition there, but another reason why I felt comfortable getting rid of a striker or two in this transfer window this season. Um, I really hope that he joins because he could be the next Luis Enrique for us. Um, there's a trial in as well for Jose Quintanilla because I'm not sure how good he is. If he hits a lot of those upper bones on his uh, on those ranges, he could be a very, very good defender. If he's got high potential, he could be a good defender. So free transfer, we're just going to get him in on trial, see how good he actually is before making any kinds of move. Um, Mirko Pigliselli is coming in. I decided to pull the trigger on this deal because I want a backup goalkeeper who's just going to sit on the bench. Similar to the Arsenal save where we went for Ben Amos, Pigliselli is going to be that man for us. And we're also doing a deal to get rid of Saliu Chan out to Man City. Eight and a half million here. Um, I didn't feel that he had enough to offer. He kind of came into this season looking really good. And since then, it's been a little bit of a downhill sort of spiral for him. Not playing great. Not playing badly, but not really what we want to see. And he's never been a firm fixture in this team. First season, he was a part of things. He drifted out last season. Kind of getting marginalised by the youngsters again this season. Far too many players in attacking midfield for him to get in there. And centre midfield we've got truly well and covered right now. Even losing people like Jorginho and Uchan doesn't hurt us. However, I did decide to go in and try and grab Pierre-Emile Heusberg from Bayern Munich. Because he's just that good. He's just that good. He's transfer listed, or he was transfer listed. Um, he wants to leave. His asking price was 16 million. I think 16 and a quarter, same as his value. And um, we're just going to go check that. So, yeah, 16 and a quarter. I'm really hoping, though, he isn't happy at Bayern and he actually does want to join us after all. We're trying to really bring him in. And uh, I think that'll be an awesome signing for the centre mid position with Ante Koric next season. Really giving us some options in midfield. So I'm happy if we can get those guys in. It does leave us with a squad that looks a bit more sort of... Um, yeah. I wonder why we went back to general info. Oops. And... Uh, yeah. Okay, well, we'll set that back to the symbolic view that I like to use. 
You can see at the moment, Arrieta is out for three to four weeks. So Tomic will be in the side for those that sort of time period. Um, the guy coming in, Piglicelli, hopefully will play back up for now. And then when Arrieta's back, he'll continue being back up for Arrieta. Whereas Tomic will go into the under 21s and, oh, sorry, under 20s and play some games there. I think that's going to help his development more than just being on the bench. Not too much else in the way of injuries towards the rear of the field. The way things look at the moment, I think De Britz and Heusberg would be a great central partnership in midfield for us. And then we've got Van Riel, Paredes and um, Kakuta at the moment. Next season it should be um, Ante Koric to play there. We've got some youngsters as well, of course. But I'm not sure how they're going to work out. Natty Bishop is out injured for another four days. So it'll be nice to see him back. He could turn out better than Kakuta, which is what we're hoping. Um, Stanley Roberto still have a chance to develop, even with Heusberg in the club. Capizzi really is just back up now. Um, I promoted Pache as well from the youth teams because he looks good enough. And I wanted other options here because Matip's 28 Jones is 27. If you know Viola gets better than Phil Jones, I'm going to sell Phil Jones. Matip is 28. He's worth 32 million. I might be selling him. You know, 22 million for Kakuta. Now the time might be right to sell him. You're looking at all these players and thinking maybe, maybe. If we're only going one up front, Marina is the man going forward. And that means 33 million. Louis Enrique could be sold. Marina, Gus de Boer, we've got a couple of good youngsters coming through. Menaj and Enrique could be sold. Maybe not this transfer window, but maybe in the next. Menaj might go in this one. So, we're making some moves. We're trying to get better and younger in this team. So, it's going to be an interesting one. Today's match, though, will go without Arietta. We don't have Marina. I'm not very confident right now. I think we might struggle ever so slightly. So Dragon Tomic will play. Um, Venerando Aprile will play. And Tony Mertens, of course, will start at left back. Then we go to um, Jean Matip. And Phil Jones, we're going to go with a central midfield partnership for this one of um, Mastali and the Brits. I need to check the roles there, though. Attacking midfield, I mean. Paredes, Kukuta, Van Riel. Louis Enrique up front, so it's not too bad of a side. We're just going to have to watch ourselves. Gustavo will make his debut off the bench if I can make that happen. Roberto Capese, Viola, uh, Koi and Acha on the bench. Then we're going to move down to putting Pache on the bench because why not? Who is fit and able to play? Not many, not many. Carpentier, we might need an attacking midfielder there, so that could be a decent one. Goalkeeper, we need one on the bench. Why not? So Carpentier will go on there. And... Ugh. I mean, really, just because they're fit, Uchen, Macek, and... I guess we just go fit this man up, who is Diaz, just to round out the bench. Not going to get used, but maybe a nice experience for them. So that's going to be our lineup and our bench for this game. And let's take a look at those roles. Oscar de Brits, deep line playmaker, Mastali. Yeah, I think I need to swap those two around. That might be a lot better for us there. And my tip is limited. And Phil Jones is the centre-back. There we go. So, hopefully, this will uh, this will work out now, Phil. We've got a backup 
goalkeeper. That's going to be the issue there. The midfield is quite young without Hoysberg in it and following Jorginho's departure. So, yeah, no Marina off the bench, but we do have Gusta Boer. We have Roberto and Capese to take over midfield. Viola, Okoy and Acha in case we get a defensive injury. Goalkeeper injury won't hurt us that much, but isn't really anything we need. Carpentier can cover attacking midfield if we need to go up there. Um, so can Mashik and Uchan on his last day in the club, hopefully. Whoops, that's not what I meant to click. So four squad numbers as this rebuild continues. Gustav Bo is going to get number 20. I like that number. Carpentier can get 11 for now. Um, no, Hodgeberg's going to get 11. So 27. Masha can get 32. And Caporali can get 35 because they're on their way out the club. So above 30 are players I know I'm not considering having at the club. So here are Roma, Stankovic, Muru, Castan, Papadopoulos, DeSantis, Zuccolini, Pjanic, Nangolin, Johnson, Salah and Sanabria. Now, I'm not too sure who Johnson is or why he's got number three playing on that left wing. We're going to take a look at that. Fabian Johnson, okay, American. Doesn't look too much of a threat. Salah will be. Sanabria, I don't know much about you. Young Paraguayan with a lot of talent, okay. We know their midfield trio here, Pjanic, Nangel and Zuccolini. That's a tough midfield with some dangerous long shooting and uh, creativity from Pjanic. Murat de Santis, not a bad set of uh, fullbacks there. Stankovic is a decent keeper. Papadopoulos is a bit of a beast in that back line. Matches up well with, um, with Joel Matip in terms of play style. And Castan's got a lot of mental strength there. So Phil Jones, old captain there, captain there. Not bad. Our defence, I'd say our full banks are better. Everything else is pretty similar. They get the goalie advantage. Mastali, De Breed's a little bit younger than these guys, but not too far behind in terms of quality. Uh, Pjanic, Johnson, Salah, I'll give the advantage to our trio. And of course, Louis Enrique will take any sort of competition between him and at the moment and anybody else not named marina gotta do these individually it appears because i did set them there we go so maybe i don't have to do them individually but we're going to we are going to we're going to close down everybody there in fact there's a lot of closing down i'm going to bet on my players being bit better than theirs and there we go so the center backs for them aren't being closed down but we will go in hard on them i don't want louis enrique chasing the ball too much the full backs will get pressure from our attacking midfielders zuccolini from a central attacking midfielder center midfielders on their midfielders and then their front three will be closed down and shut out of the game wherever possible we don't want to see them get in so on a good run Gail Kakuta likes that one we're gonna go assertively having faith just to see how that works out thank you very much for that pop-up um but yeah nodded in agreement there Hugo Van Riel Mertens look deep in thought so that's a weak left side in terms of motivation right now and of course the goalie just listens keenly we don't know too much about Dragon Tomic um, so far hopefully he can continue to play decently as he has to this date and uh, we'll see how he turns out potentially but I'm happy with that I am happy with that I'm hoping Enrique has a good game he's had a bit of a quiet season by his standards the Brits has played well. I'm hoping Mastali can get in amongst the game as well with him. Mertens there getting the ball nearly, and that is a great start. Looks like they're going to go long against us, but Tomic out to clear that. Matip up to Paredes, inside to Gail Kakuta. There's Van Riel up to Verando Aprile. Takes it down, drills it to the keeper. 
Van Riel with the resulting corner. He wins back that ball. Mastali's now got it. Phil Jones. And that's a bad ball out there towards Louis Enrique. Mastali clears up. And we get away with that one. Wasteful though in attack, I feel, in the opening few minutes. So I'm hoping that we calm down. And for that sort of reason, I'm going to tell them to calm down. Hopefully that will just take things a little bit more aside. It looks like Sergio Canales is coming on. What a great substitution to be able to make. Sadly for them, it's the end of Millennium Pianic. So, panic stations for them. I'm very happy to see the back of him. That's a real danger, I feel. On the counter, I still feel that they are very, very dangerous. Of course, down that right-hand side with Salah. And uh, nine golem from distance shooting, I think, is going to be a real handful. So let's just hope that we can keep the pressure up on them. Now that they've lost their key man, pretty much. Van Riel heads it down. Paredes knocks it in. The ball came in from Kakuta. And what can you say? The three attacking midfielders there on that free kick manage to actually do their jobs Aprile has got booked however not the best start in that terms good little header out there by Joel Matip they're trying to feed this ball here to the midfielders Nangol and will take a shot from distance a little bit of a sight to there but it's well off target so Aprile has been booked we don't like to see that Akoi can come off the bench if we need him to but they have not sort of uh, slowed down their attack at all. Joe Matip leaves his man go. It's got to be a good save from Dragon Tomic there. Papadopoulos versus Matip. And Mertens will get there to clear. Mastali heads it back to Luis Enrique, who's not playing well so far. Again. Assertively encourage. Passionately. Get creative. Um, yeah, and demand more from the centre-backs as well, I think. Because they've only got one man to mark and they're letting him free at every opportunity right now. They're marking the big boys quite well at the uh, set-pieces. But in terms of just keeping hold of the striker, not doing too good in that sort of uh, effect. In fact, I think that might be a tactical thing as well. So yeah, player instructions. Let's just go make sure that we're set up. I don't know why these aren't, um, aren't set up. Fewer risky passes, please. For you. Much less closing down. And ooh, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? I'm going to mark Sanabria out with Matip. And there we go. A bit more passing there directly from you, Phil. We're going to mark Salah and Fabian Johnson. Let's see. Rome proposes to move into channels, dribble more, shoot more, shorter passing, and uh, yeah, close down, but ease off the tackles. So Enrique is going to do a lot of chasing for this game because we do have Gustavo on the bench ready to come on. Aprile might make way as well. Matip's not looking the fittest right now, which is a kind of shame, but I'm not sure if we've got all the players there to make the uh, make the changes we want. Looks like Matip did his job there, went on the man and tried to win that ball. Mastali, good cutout. Kakuta, Enrique couldn't quite get it. Van Riel takes another shot, so... A little bit more movement and passion up front, I think, might see us get away in this game. Half an hour is gone. We do have the lead. Can we extend it? 
Oh, off the line. Look at that. Kakuta removes it. K lovely ball there. And Paredes can't quite get to it, but... Yeah, Enrique didn't just sort of smash that clear. There we go. Turning Mertens. Leave Enrique down for Kakuta, who can't get that on target. A little bit of a shame there. Aprile wins that ball. Paredes to Kakuta again. Van Riel loses it. But there's Mertens and Mastali. But again, nine goaling in. This is a tough tackling game, of course. Mastali can't get on Sava. Tomic with a good save from Canales. There is Matip Man marking the striker. And Enrique now needs to play that ball to Aprile. He doesn't. The chance breaks down. We're going to go into half time with Phil Jones not playing well. Matip a little tired. Aprile on a booking. And Enrique doing nothing up front. Backline dodgy. Up front. Sort of wasteful. Not what we want. We do have the lead though. The attacking midfield trio combined well. So assertively. Um, far from pleased guys. I'm far from pleased. This game should be in the bag. And it's not. Aggressive. I'm not happy with you. Seem down and pressurized. You know what? Get off my pitch. Louis Enrique has been really really poor over the last few games and i don't know why i really don't know why and i'm very very puzzled by it i'm very sort of annoyed by it this is a guy who scored 49 goals last season in the league this season out of 18 games he scored 11 like this isn't a guy who struggles with pressure this isn't a guy who needs to be sort of wrapped up in cotton wool. I don't know why he'd be a bit upset there. He looks fired up now that I've subbed him off, so maybe that'll make a little bit of an improvement. And let's see, can we get Kakuta motivated? We can, so it's a better team talk to start the second half. Let's check my instructions then. So we don't want to look for overlap. We're going to work that ball into the box. We're going to exploit the middle against this team. And, yeah, slightly higher line. We'll remove stay on feet. Um, yeah, normal tempo, I believe, will be better for us. And run at that defence. I'm not convinced by their defence as a whole. They are a little bit slow at the back. So that might be something De Boer can take on. So we're going to keep an eye on right back. There are Mastali and Phil Jones going over to close down. Nine goal in there. Aprile wins that header. We will keep an eye on him and his booking because Akoi is on the bench. And uh, it would be a shame to see a red card in this match. As the bird doing a decent job there out on the wing. Gives it a Kukuta. And a good shot, but straight at the goalkeeper. Nice by a prelate. A 1-2 and Papa. Oh, Papa nearly put it in his own net. He slid in and it came back off the post. Sadly, Van Riel couldn't take advantage and just tap it in. His run had taken him a bit wider and he was past the ball at that stage. Sergio Canales has been injured and they've gone Oh, they've gone to Ed and Jeco. Okay, now things change. Now things change. Sanabria moves into midfield. Really? You had nothing else on the bench you could go to? You didn't have another centre midfielder. Yeah, you did. Why didn't you go? I know he's a youngster, but... Whatever. Whatever. They've gone to Ed and Dzeko. Big, strong, powerful man up front. That battle might actually suit Joel Matip a bit more. Less pace, more strength, more jumping ability and whatnot. So Dzeko there will be a real test for Matip, meaning that any second runners or any time Dzeko gets in behind... 
that will be Phil Jones's chance to shine. Salah and Johnson still out on the wings. You know what? I'm going to make that change. I'm going to make that change. A prelate for Okoy. And we've got one eye on Mastali, one eye on Matip as to who else to bring on. Complete forward. Let's move to advanced forward. Give De Boer his proper sort of role. Kingsley, let's see a good game from you. That eliminates the chance of a second booking for a, um, a prelate. So I'm happy enough to see that take place. So Mertens up the field there. The ball will come straight back though. Oh, Tony Mertens. Thankfully it's not a booking. We get our substitution in. And there we go. Kakuta out to De Boer. He's going to take this down the right hand side. It's what he likes to do. The Brits we haven't seen much of. Nice work there. Kakuta was kind of blocked off. Couldn't get the shot away. But does win a corner. And Akoi will chase that down. Couldn't win the header. De Sanctis jumps in there. Trips him. And we'll get a dangerous free kick, which we won't be able to see. Kakuta, that's headed clear. Matip leaves the man open. We pull across. A nine goal in through on goal. Great there. Really, now you do that sub. Wow, interesting. But a good save by Tomic. Um, opposition have changed once again. So Sapanaro is coming on in attacking midfield. Which means Fabian Johnson now moves into centre midfield. I don't know what they're doing. Um, I really don't know what they're doing here in terms of formation. They had a central... They had a striker playing centre midfield. Now they've got a left midfielder playing there. Uh, who looks more like a defender anyway. And they've got an attacking central player. Attacking midfield central in uh, on the wing. So... Not even a pacey player. Not even someone that's great at dribbling or anticipation. I'm not sure how they're trying to play this one. I mean, losing Pjanic will be a big loss for them, of course. Um, losing Canales as his replacement did hurt them. But, yeah, I'm not sure where their subs are coming from. So, let's see what we can do then with our final sub. 62 minutes on the clock. Jean Matip, do I take Matip off? I mean, that's the question, isn't it? That is the question. Viola versus Jeco. Do we want to see that? Do we want to see... I'm not sure I want to see that. I'm not sure I want to see that. We'll leave it for now. We will leave it for now. 76 is okay. We're facing a corner. Let's get that clear first. Zuccolini, unmarked there at the near post, gets a header, but it's way off target. Gustavo, not really doing too much. Bruno does get booked as well after wasting that chance. Nine goal and could get booked here. Yes, he does. So their central midfielders now are going to struggle against my attacking midfielders. Akoi gets there. Kakuta to Paredes. Back out to Akoi. Can he get a cross in? He can. Van Riel with a terrible header. Not doing good at all. Matip's my only good defender over this last kind of uh, this second half at all. Akoi again. Not afraid to tackle. Paredes. De Boer. It's Gustavo. On his debut, through ball by Paredes, goal and assist for that man. But Gustavo steps up, slots in, gets the win here today more than likely. Absolutely fantastic. And Hugo Van Riel gets booked and that is again not what we want to see. Now I've got a very difficult choice to make. Matip is tiring, but he seems to be holding on fairly well. Van Riel has been booked. He is the man of the match so far. Even though Parade has got a goal and an assist, Van Riel is the man making us tick. Do I go with a youngster in, cure, in quarantine Carpentier? Not the best of players, but a really good fit for that position. 
Or do I change things up a little? Do I change things up? Do we go Salyu Chan? His final game. That might be a good idea. It might be a good idea, but it's not the idea I'm going with. It's Roberto. It's a formation change. It is a formation change. So Mastali will move centrally. De Brits and Roberto either side of him will be playing as decent sort of playmaking people. Uh, what do I want to do here? Attack in midfield. Uh, sorry, attack playmaker support. Deep line playmaker defend. I think I'd want to see that as more of a box to box player through the middle. And Roberto then will be a support. Oh. I think he'll be a deep line playmaker uh, defend. So. That might suit us a little bit more. I'm hoping. I'm hoping, maybe not. Let's move a coin back up to fullback attack. And then Kakuta just moves over here and will become uh, an attack minded advanced playmaker. Paredes now will sit back in support. Although, in a coin to overlap that side. And yeah, we're on the Christmas tree. Let's see if Roberto can help us out in midfield. Stop them from attacking down the wings as easily. Give us a little bit of a chance. The nine Golan is booked and injured. So let's see if we can't get this ball into a danger zone. He couldn't compete there. Gustavo does so well to go past his men there. Clips the shot to the far post. Can't get it on target. But it's the right shot choice, and it was a decent effort from the youngster. On his debut, he's got one goal. He's still learning how to play with the players behind him. Now he's got less support, but he could still be a really good player. Paredes there, almost goes through. Papa will clear that down the wing. Joel Matip, lovely ball to Phil Jones. Mastali, Kakuta. Mastali won't let that ball be lost. Lovely one, two by Akoy and Paredes. And again, and it's Gus. De Boer, two goals on his debut. That's what we like to see. Five foot nine, but wins that one in the air. Matip now playing an absolute storming game, but is really tired. We as a team are really, really tired. So it's time to set up our instructions to kind of, uh, kind of change that. Shoot on sight, early crosses, uh, much lower in terms of tempo fairly narrow slightly deeper we're going to sit on defense we're going to go normal we're going to go balanced um much less closing down stay in your feet shorter passing retain that possession i get clear it out to the flanks be more disciplined stick to your positions dribble less and whip those crosses into the box Take a breather and waste some time, guys. Why not? Why not? This is... Yeah, I don't like defensive. I don't like defensive. We're going to go on control instead. But yeah, this is how we're going to see out the last few minutes of the game. Trying to get that clean sheet. It's been a good little game. Luis Enrique not performing, sadly. We've got a tired little team at the moment. But Gustavo has got two goals there. It's a shame that ball couldn't get into the box and might have given him a chance at a debut hat-trick. We will never know. Paredes, great positional play, great assists. He got the opening goal as well from that free kick. Good performance from him. De Boer, two off the bench, phenomenal 8.7. Joe Matip, a beast at the back. And Van Riel played well before getting booked too. So... Very happy with that result, boys. Very, very happy. Calm, you deserve a breather. You were also booked. That's why I took you off. Everybody's reacted well. That's enough of a team talk. We walk away. Dominating Roma. Leandro Predes with the opening goal. Two goals on his debut from the bench as well for our new striker, Gustavo. Two and a half million already seems well spent and it does open up the door 
for a possible exit for Luis Enrique. His production is dipping. His value is at an all-time high. This could be the time to shift on the iconic players, Enrique, Kakuta. You know, we can get rid of those Matip and or Jones towards the end of this season. We're getting rid of Uchan. We're going to have to see how things actually line up. But on his debut, Gustavo deserves a ton of praise. Superb. Good start to your career. Welcome to the club, Gus. Hugo, again, another youngster who just has impressed from day one. Another great Dutch player. So, um, assertive. Superb chance creation there. Thank you very much. Leandro Paredes, good player as well. Sort of hit and miss for us over his career. Him and Kakut are sort of flattered to deceive sometimes, but um, passionate. Superb chance creation there. Grabbed the first goal, laid on the other two for the youngster. That could be a valuable contribution later on. And Matip up against Sanabria and up against Eden Dzeko. The big man mountain stood firm. Great game. Great game. Very happy with you, Joel. So there we go. It looks like a couple of teams around us also won. So Bologna move up into third. Of course, Juventus keep pace in second place. But that's quite interesting to see Roma fall down to fourth. Torino stay fifth despite the defeat. Napoli also lost their last game. So we're almost at the halfway stage. We are still unbeaten, 15-3-0. Seven points clear of Juventus. Let's see what happens then over the next couple of days. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes here just seeing what kind of um, the fallout from the matches and hopefully get the signing of um, Heuberg in this video. So six days... You guys can have two days off. You day, yeah, you guys can have one day off. There we go. And let's just check out the news. Is this what we want to see? De Boer there. Great to see him playing so well out of the gate. Very happy with that. Um, Calabria is out for three weeks. Okay, that's not a problem. Savona for eight days, again, not a problem. These youngsters, we don't need them too much. Um, and yeah, Hoiberg, the offer has been accepted. So that's good. And he does want to join. He is interested in joining. So 90 grand a week, five and a half million and half a million. No, a million for his agent. We try and make up for the wage loss by bumping these up a little. 15 grand, 12 and a half, 255, 37 million release clause I'm not very happy with, but that would be more than double what we're paying for him. We're going to remove that, he's not going to accept that, but it's a good basis for negotiations. Um, 275, I'll give you half a million if you're in team of the year. And we'll bump that up to 95 because I think that will work out better. So, 6 million in signing on fees. We've got a decent little deal here for um, Pierre Emile Heusberg. I think he's going to be a big player for us this season and over the next couple of seasons. So, as we're leading the way, can we make sure that we continue that by having another great centre midfielder to take on the role. Let's see. Yeah, I'm happy with all those. He stays in Italy at a low level, or he goes out to France and plays first-team football at a, a Ligue 1 club. I'm not too uh, too upset about that at all. Ron Robert Zila, no thank you. Um, okay, 1.1 million for uh, Les Cano. Yeah, I'm not feeling that one right now. I've brought in other strikers, so we don't need to pull the trigger there. 
Um, punch it. No, they're all okay. They're all okay. Can we get this in? Let's see. What's this? Um, Torres. Yeah, I'm happy enough for that. First team football at left back. That's kind of what we are looking for. This video is going to run a little bit long, but I'm just going to try and get through these next few days to sign a couple of these players. So, Mirko will come in as backup. I like that a lot. So, a cheap backup deal for Mirko Pigliacelli, who will become our backup for this season. I think he's pretty decent. Not great, but pretty decent all in all. So, that gives us a little something there. Integrate him into the team. Set him here as uh, registered. And he does qualify as homegrown, which is absolutely fantastic. So... The, fa the fantastic thing about having young players is they will turn into homegrown players and they don't count towards your limits at the early stages of their career. So building through youth is always a good way around things. So we now look at our goalkeeping situation. We find that um, Piglia Shelley is currently number one, just ahead of Tomich with Arietta out injured. He will take that spot back in the future. Savona, key player. Yep, I'm happy enough with that one. Sally is going out here then. Um, you're welcome back anytime. Really, really happy to see you getting a good move. Man City, eight and a half million for Sally Chan. Again, I feel that's a good deal for us. Free transfer, he played. What's that? He played 60 games for us. He scored six goals, one in ten. Not too bad, eight assists, three man of the matches, a good sort of 7.3, 7.35 average rating throughout his career at Catania. And um, we've kind of outgrown him, but Sally is going to be a good player for someone. Maybe not going to get the games at Man City, but it's an opportunity for him and that could be quite good. So I'll spend whatever I deem necessary. Um, less pressure on him. He's only a backup anyway. And Correa is someone I'm looking at, but I'm not sure I want to get him right now. And yeah, Antonio Marcos sadly joins Real Madrid. So yeah, it's a shame that he went to Real Madrid, but they've got older players in their team, so we're going to see how that works out. Um, yeah. It's a shame though, I really kind of wanted him, but I'm okay not grabbing him. Quintanilla, we will see what he works out. Luxano, there's more bids coming in. I really want Hoiberg before AC Milan, that's kind of what we're looking at. Hey, that's decent potential. 14, 15, 16, that's good. 14 anticipation, 17 positioning, he has hit the upper limits on a few of his things. Not bad, he's still young. Good physical. Let's have a look at this report then. Very determined, reliable. Right place, right time. Determined, okay. He would be our third choice centre back. Him and Viola would be there together. And he's got extra potential to come. I did not expect this one to work out. I did not expect it to work out. So he is American. Um, yeah, Salvadoran. That's not going to help us in terms of work permit. He is only... Uh, yeah, he is only 5'11", but... 20 years of age. I don't know. I mean, he's cheap. I think that's the uh, key thing here, so... We pay half a million total signing on fees, bump his wages up. Try and bump these down to compensate. And get rid of that wage rise. He can have 25 grand after 20 games. Okay, so what's he want then? So he wants a bit more here, so we'll set that up. We'll put that back. 
Yeah, I'm not I'm not prepared to go too high there. And that should be enough. Good deal for Quintella and a good player for us for the future, maybe. Or just someone we could sell for five to ten million in a couple of seasons. So happy to do that. He rejected Juventus. That's good. So I'm happy to see that happen. No, you're gonna need games, Natty Bishop. Uh, yeah. You've been injured, I'm not sure. They're a prelay I wanna play. Everyone else seems fit, so can we sign our man? And we can. We can indeed. Pierre Emil Hoiberg has agreed to deal with Catania. So 16.25 million to get ourselves a very, very talented centre midfielder. Now the deal to get rid of um, uh, Jorginho is going to work out even better. That's going to leave the video there. I've got a phone call to get on with. I hope you enjoyed. If you have, click that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time with Hoiberg in the team. Continue to go in places. Until then, guys, take care of yourselves.